right, welcome back. back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the broadcast here. Once again, I'm Breaky CPK, joined by Minnie here as my co-caster. And you're tuning into the Starlighter iLeague Star Series Complexity American Qualifiers on our second game here of our second series, Complexity versus Doo-Wop. So here we are, Doo-Wop up Radiance one game to nothing back. in this two-game series, trying to take it 2-0, which would be quite, uh, I think, you know, in some ways, and uh, you can call it an upset, upset if they do that. Yeah, definitely. definitely. But uh, Complexity, obviously, uh, trying to finish it with a split, which would at least be all right for them. But, yeah, Mini, so that first game, though, man, uh, the draft, it just felt off for Complexity. Yeah, definitely. It just seemed a little bit out of the question. But um, hopefully we see something different. Um, perhaps like our first pick on to SD, perhaps still on the board. Um, Slaughter Band, Ember Band. They actually banned out Meepo as well, actually. So perhaps scared of um, 747's Meepo. Play pretty did well, but yeah, SD's probably on the board that I'm probably looking and eyeing up. Perhaps Complexity are going to go for it, but go for Earth Spirit instead. But SD Luna is now available for Doobop, but Complexity could perhaps yeah. pick up Rubik. I don't know, <clears throat> we'll see. But definitely, I prefer this opening from Complexity than the uh, Rubik and Pudge. Yeah, that's the last game again. It's it's uh, I, I don't know like e even it with just the, gimmicky, really. even oh, with God, that sorry, and then well the, even with that but then yeah they not to pick on cancel but it can, whether it was his decision or not in the end we're really not even sure but um, the choice to go the items there and the, the lack of just overall damage output you could just feel it just it just felt all funky here for complexity so I think like with like offline pod it's like either it's kind of those things that it, it like either it works or it doesn't like it's kind of a, a very kind of very risky like, kind of play whether those hooks lands or if they don't like it's and you have to make them land if you want to make it worthwhile whereas if you pick something like a, like an underlord like you you know what you're getting with that underlord you know and talking of underlord we're gonna get it again <laughs> why not man don't fix one ain't broken you know yeah played it very well last game snaking uh, the one two play last game at least and uh, yeah played it very solid so shadow demon then second pick interesting by Duop right there. I mean, as you mentioned, they had a chance to get the Shadow Demon Luna if they really wanted to, but I mean, Underlord was was very very good um, for them last game. I don't see why they didn't get up here. But one <coughs> the one problem with picking SD though is like the second pick. Um, whether you're whether your first pick or second pick, like as in if you're getting SD um, for the second pick, obviously is that like, allows the Luna to be banned. Um, obviously, which I expect Flexi to ban out here. Um, in the fourth pick. Um, although they do have Timbersaw and Earth Spirit, which are both great ways to deal with illusions, but you're still fine against an SD Luna, which is something, you know, it's still very, very hard with, with an Underlord as well backing it up. It's um, something that I assume Complexity will ban out, but perhaps Melons has um, got something up his sleeve, perhaps to do with Well, it. this has similarities to remaining. yesterday's draft uh, once again um, against DC, where they actually, when they got Timbersaw, it was against a Luna Shadow Demon combination, and it was actually very good for that. But not only that, it was actually played by Mu uh, in the short lane. He's obviously Came known in, yeah. for playing Timbersaw, but played it as more of the the short lane. And then they actually went an offlane Morphling that game, which which actually was all right. The lockdown on the Morphling was actually pretty damn good because he just went the whole strength build. But mm. um, I don't know if we're gonna see that again. But yeah, it's kind of making reference to yesterday. They had Earth Spirit that game as well, so it's already pretty similar. Right yeah, definitely impossibility. Um, and obviously there's, there's great ways to deal with the illusions and stuff, but definitely, uh, I don't know, it's still SD Luna at the end of the day, isn't it? Like, whether you have counters to it or not, it's you know, still SD Luna, but we'll see here, final ban, they banned out the OD already, um, which is definitely very good against Timbersaw, but they banned out Dragonaut instead, so Luna is still on the board, whether we do want to go for it or not is is now the question. I think if you pick up SD, I mentioned it before, but I think if you pick up SD, you want to have a, a carry that can you know, take benefit of illusions and obviously Luna being the, the premier example, but there's Terrorblade and, and other ones, but if Luna's on the board, I don't know. I think you still go for it. Otherwise, why are you picking SD, you know? Five yeah. Like, um, they they pick up SD the second here. Like, if they wanted Underlord, that's fine. Why don't you Underlord plus one or Reverse Underlord, you know, time. plus whatever, another hero, we don't need to pick the SD. Perhaps they were scared that Complexity were going to take it, which I guess definitely is a possibility, like SD plus Earth Spirit, but then Luna could be better. I don't know, there's a lot of different questions that, that are kind of going on in the minds of both the drafters here, and um, I guess we're, we're going to see eventually, but they're dipping into reserve time now, so that it looks like they, they still haven't really made up their mind on, on what they want to do, whether they want to pick this Luna or not. Yeah, they. Uh, I mean, that's definitely one of the things going through their head. You got to figure. Now they go Ogre Magi, so they get another support. It still could set up for a Luna, great. you know, the Bloodlust yeah, buff. Great, yeah, 
they're great with Luna, um, Ogre plus SD. And now complexity. And the thing is, the thing. What's so great about picking SD before you pick Luna is that now it kind of it, you complexity can't pick up SD. Ten like, uh, sorry, they can't pick up Luna because SD just r completely destroys um, an enemy five Luna. Um, just by like pretty much the SD position five can kill the enemy carry position one Zero if it is a hero like Luna, because mm -hmm. you just disrupt into Soul Catcher, um, into uh, demonic purge, and the hero, the enemy Luna just can't do anything. So. Now complexity, you have to kind of pick heroes against it, because um, I'm pretty sure Luna's going to be coming. They pick up Ogre Magi for a third pick as well. Again, all this kind of buffing towards the, the Lunas, which looks pretty decent. Ooh, they have a lot of roam heavy support here. Spirit Witch Doctor, that's two of the better ones, I figure. Uh, Melon's most likely going to be on the Witch Doctor again. We'll see what kind of build he goes for, too. Witch Doctor's kind of interesting. You obviously can go more of the Maledict, more aggressive style, or more of the heal instead. Uh, if you're going to be maybe grouping up or just for the defensive mechanism of it, the Voodoo Restoration right there. So let's see what they decide with that. But, yeah, as, you, as we keep going back to, Luna still an option. Terror Blade is another one that you can line up uh, well with a Shadow Demon. So so is Morphling, actually. Morphling's quite good. But um, against, like, Earth Spirit and Timbersaw, I think he suffers more so than the Luna or the Terror Blade. I mean, they all do suffer quite a bit, um, Timbersaw and Earth Spirit, but they've got SF. So they're still not showing their carry, and they're playing a little bit coy with complexity now. I don't know whether they're going to pick up or not. Yeah, deciding to go the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, it's, uh, it's usually when you see a Shadow Demon, especially second pick like that, you, you, you figure it's going to be... You're going to see that core kind of lined up with it with the third or the fourth pick at that point. But not the case here. They they are keeping uh, us and complexity guessing to the very end. So um, I mean, they don't want to show it too early. And then I guess complexity have a chance to sort of counter it with the next couple of picks. But yeah, I don't know. We, we, we saw obviously in, in previous games, actually in, in the previous series where you know, with Team Onyx where if you don't kind of pair a, a, a strong kind of illusion carry um, with the SD, I think he kind of l falls off as a support hero. He might as well play a, a different support hero in general. Like if you're not taking advantage of that disruption, then I guess you can take use of it in terms of the gank sort of thing. But I think the illusion is definitely um, sort of spam is, is what you want to pick him up for. But so you can play, see, like if you said Timid Saw can definitely play as, as a safe lane for Mu, but I think you're, you're going to definitely want some physical presence um, coming out from the next two picks from maybe mid or off lane. Perhaps TA is, is on the board, Fe, uh, fares very well against SF, but then you've got the Ogre Magi to deal with, so TA versus two is struggling. But Lone Droid, though, a great hero, um, whether he's been played mid or, or, or safe lane against actually an SD Luna, because obviously it was actually what was the original reason of why Lone Droid was coming into the meta, actually, was, was, a, deal, was a way to deal with the SD Luna, because obviously you can outrange him with the, the kind of sniper exactly. Lone Droid, um, and decent against him as well, because obviously the, the BKB Luna struggles um, with kind of getting kited with, with the bear, actually. So we'll see. I, I think with this Lone Droid pick, I don't think Plexi are going to ban the, the Luna, actually. They're trying to almost bait Doobop into picking it. Whether Doobop are going to do it or not is a Another question, but yeah, I you know I take it back to yesterday's draft again with the Earth Spirit with the Timber Saw especially it was very good for dealing with those illusions. So even though they lost that game in the end, honestly they 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 could have and frankly should have won that game. You could argue it was just a little bit of an overextension at one push that they had and. Uh, DC was able to capitalize and come back and win. So um, I, I think it really goes back to, as you're pointing out, that they're just not scared of that Luna combination. So I don't, I don't think they're going to ban it here. Yeah. Uh, quite stubborn drafting for Melons, but I mean, if it works out, it works out. The end of the day. Yeah, yeah, life Stealer. I ban something else entirely. I, you know, I'm going to call Spirit Breaker here. This is just randomly out of the blue. For complexity? For complexity, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, I guess it's okay. It's decent against BKB. Damn it. Tinker. Radiant team pick. So it's going to be off lane Timber Saw then. Your mic just got pretty low, by the way. Sorry, what about now? Uh, okay, yeah. now it's a little bit better, yeah. There we go. So, yeah, it's just, um, I think, uh, I mean, all cores from Complexity now, the, the Timber Saw, Lone Jordan Tinker, all great to deal with uh, Luna. So I don't know if Dewop can even get away with picking. A Luna now because of how many cores they've they've kind of picked against it. But at the same time, do they want to make the SD kind of useless without picking a, a Luna or, or a Terrorblade? Questions. Yeah. 
Any dances is breaking. Any dances. I don't know if it's you. I mean, the new soul catcher yeah, never, build a bit. Yeah. Useless, but I mean, there is Not a lot of ways useful. to do with it though. Like Timber Saw is great against it. Lone Drill is great against it. So is Tinker. The pickup Weaver instead. I, I prefer this pickup actually over the Luna. Has a bit more mobility. Has a bit more survivability as well. And it still is a decent, you know, illusion hero. Obviously, it has a lot of high agility. Um, obviously, not as great as the Luna, or a great pair as, as, as the Luna with the SD, but I think it is better overall for the draft. So, yeah, I like it, honestly. I like it. It worked out well for him last game, the SF and, and Weaver combinations. Yeah. Actually, they had all they had all three same calls, didn't they? Underlord, Sutter Fiend, and Weaver. They did. Um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the same heroes there. It was, uh, Crystal made it an undying were the difference, but... Uh, Kind of similar supports in their own right, not really. But anyways, the point is, yeah, those three cores are exactly yeah, I mean, the same. Undyne and Ogre are very similar, actually. They both kind of do similar jobs, help out in the laning phase, can kind of box up mid, and uh, SD is a bit different. That's him, but yeah, Ogre and Undyne are pretty similar. Just that Bloodlust is going to be really useful for SF and as well as the Weaver, actually. So, yeah, I mean, I definitely prefer the, the draft this game to Complexity and then last game, but it's, uh, the Duops draft is, is still, again, very solid. Yeah. See how it pans out. Quick pause into the quick resume. Always like to see that. All right, here we go, guys. Game number two here of this two-game series. So, of course, uh, Duop up one game to nothing, trying to get that 2 nothing victory over Complexity. And Complexity got this match here, but then they also are set to play next against Team Freedom, so it's going to be a longer night for them, that's for sure. And uh, we'll see how they can finish off here against Duop. At least want to get some momentum going into that next series. But... Off the bat, they're not even going to smoke up at least just yet. They're just simply walking towards their shrine. They do have a smoke on Melons. Looks like they're pinging, and yeah, they are going to use it right here now. They make their way to the top area. Underlord, the only one in the vicinity. As, oh, they're going to go right to the ancient. It's going to be seen by Shadowfiend. Shadowfiend, though, he's, I don't know if he was just AFK or what. <laughs> that seemed like a I'm looking somewhere else kind of deal. <laughs> and he gets caught. Well. It's pretty just completely AFK, but a decent start. Tinker tanking the uh, level up lost actually, and he's already looking towards buying his boots. Oh, two cells actually, two cells. So yeah, it's gonna fare quite well, particularly with Ogre boxing the Tinker out. These two cells are actually gonna be quite nice to help cancel out. Yeah. See, Underlord is like, I want this rune, damn it! But <laughs> they're making it pretty difficult for him. So I don't think he's gonna be getting it. And it looks like it is gonna be maybe picked up by Z Freak. As he is positioning himself, yeah, he's going to take it. Moo was heading over as if he wanted it as well, but uh, see if we, better to be safe than sorry again. Make sure to get it before they do. Meanwhile, at the bottom lane, Shadow Demon, he's actually... He took the bounty. Yeah, but Did he actually get it? Okay. Oh. Yeah, he took the bounty. Disrupt the Tinker and then just took it. Um, so it's actually going to be an off lane lone droid, actually, um, and the safe lane Timber. I prefer this, actually, the way the match up because obviously Timber's great against the Underlord, obviously. Underlord being strength, obviously Tim Lord can take a big no. advantage with the Whirling Death here. And not only that, but a Lone Droid should be quite good against this Weaver and, and SD that should be in range. And obviously he's able to sort of pull the Creep Wave with his bear and stuff. So yeah, I really like the, the lane stage here coming out from, from Complexity. All right, I'm being told I need, to low, I need to up my mic as well as yours. God, I don't, I don't get it, man. <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, I'll, I'll try to make some some adjustments, guys, in the best that I can. But um, again, I'm using similar settings as middle lane ogre magi. I know he is going to be fine, but I'm um, I'm using similar settings to what I always use here on this setup now. So I, I don't know how it's all of a sudden it's not good enough, break it. Come on, man. it's just shit. But um, yeah, I'll will do my best, guys. So so bear bear with me with the volume. But anyways, back to the action here. Obviously, a little bit of harassment there in the middle lane, but ogre gets boxed out and is forced to go all the way back to the base here. Where he'll have to get that regen on his top lane. Melon's rotating up. Not going to make a play, though. What do you think? Uh, what would you expect to see on the Witch Doctor? It's somewhat of a roam heavy team. Do does he get the Maledict, do you think? Or does he go more of the Voodoo Restoration? Well, it, re it really depends, really. Like, I think if he's looking for kills, then obviously Maledict is definitely more important. And I think. Um, it's probably what he's going to have here, but the the Voodoo Restoration is really good against, particularly the, the Ogre sort of spam onto the Tinker, can really kind of s secure um, the Tinker's life. Um, but he's sort of staying top, so I expect the Melody to be coming out here, but um, we'll see. It's, it's kind of a defensive or aggressive kind of mindset, and we'll see what Z Freak chooses. He's got level 2 now, so he's probably going to decide in the next couple of seconds. Yeah. 
Top lane moves, taking some pressure here from the Firestorm, but obviously he has support coming in. Now Snaking's the one in trouble. The Maledict picked up. Now comes the Cask, and comes a roll from Zephyr. Just had a ring. The Boulder Smash connects, though. They're doing a lot of damage, but again, only level one Maledict is pretty damn weak, so not going to be enough damage for any kind of kill, but they get a lot of pressure out at least onto the Underlord. But uh, yeah, he just kind of walks it off. Not really the biggest deal up there, despite that tri lane going up against him. It's pretty tanky. Yeah. Yeah, the Maledict is, is sort of leveled up. At level one, Maledict is very, very weak um, for a Witch Doctor needs level two at least before he's uh, threatening. Bottom lane, pressure into the tower right here. We got Lone Druid, of course, he's uh, not necessarily the greatest at defending said tower, so understandable that they're taking advantage of that. Weaver gets some nice auto attacks into it before having to be forced out himself. Even the creep wave going away, but Take a look at this middle matchup. Shadow Fiend currently 12 and 7 against the uh, Tinker that's 10 and 6. So Shadow Fiend actually the slight advantage there. Has had uh, Ogre nearby to assist, of course, for a fair amount of it. He's going to try and contest actually this, this neutral camp as well. I don't think he's going to get any CS though. It's, yeah, it's not enough damage, unfortunately. I'm alone there. I suppose it is rotating over, but it's being spotted by the Ogre Magi. But this is what we kind of expect between um, the kind of two position or both of the position fours from both teams. Earth Spirit kind of wants to sort of try and find ganks, whereas the Ogre is going to try and stop the Earth Spirit from, from trying to find those kills. Like, it's like the uh, Ogre is like the bodyguard, and, and Earth Spirit is kind of like the assassin kind of thing. <laughs> Although, obviously, Ogre does, has his uh, kill potential as well, but. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, uh, Earth Spirit has more kill potential with the Royal, but yeah, I think uh, Complexia are kind of okay with, with how the lanes are going right now, though. Like, they're getting farm on, on all lanes, really. Um, SF is beating Tinker a little bit, but that's just from the, the Ogre help. But here comes the Rofian from Earth Spirit, though, misses, unfortunately. That should be enough for SF to, to get away scot free. Yeah, I was watching the bottom lane action, though, and they do catch Lone Drew. They put him under initially. He tries to TP out after, but it's not enough. And they just had enough damage to finish him off. Obviously, now with a Soul Catcher, again, doing plenty of amp damage onto him and uh, able to secure that kill. So they miss the opportunity in the middle lane. They lose their Lone Druid from the bottom lane. So good uh, sequence of events for Duop right there. As Underlord at the top, he's going to avoid another Cask Bounce, and he'll be fine. Uh, Witch Doctor does get the one point into Booty Restoration, by the way. It is kind of one of those one-point wonder abilities. So he's uh, going to take advantage of that. But this top tower is uh, going to take some good pressure. Moo going beyond, doing some good damage right there to the Underlord again, and actually forcing him to TP away. Going to pressure that tower in, but uh, not a whole lot of rotations going on, though. Oh, see if we can spot the smoke rotation. Speaking of that. This going to be fine. Has that laser, level three. Harassing with it, and good vision, obviously, here for complexity in the middle lane as well. As they do got that Observer Ward, very aggressive. Almost in that tower range, but obviously so just out. We're seeing Tinker obviously going uh, sort of three points into laser, but we're going to see... Oh, there is a roll from C3, but it's going to miss. Sometimes you see, like, Tinkers, they do two builds, either they max kind of the, the rockets and the lasers sort of for kill potential, or they start looking to get points and march machines to help them eventually get their farm on, and there hasn't been any kind of kill potential on the SF, so Tinkers going to start putting more points in, in march from machines, and, and perhaps might even see some stacks coming out from Complexity, but I don't see any stacks at the moment, but we might see some melons might rotate over and try and give uh, Tinker a bit of a helping hand, seeing as he is struggling a little bit, not that much, but a little bit in the, in the mid lane. Top lane, Timbersaw. He's doing the free farm thing. Does have the early arcane boots. Again, it is a little curious uh, scene. Well, Timbersaw is being played by Moo, of course. So, still, uh, even with the, the lone druid and everything. He got him on the Timbersaw. It's a very comfortable hero for him, as we saw yesterday. And, of course, TI, most noticeably. That's what the hero that, uh, safe to say, really helped her make him a popular name. And he's going to really harass Ogre Magi here. Snaking also somewhat low. Trying to assist, but now out comes the Cask and Maledict to follow. Not even necessary, actually. Moo does enough damage to take him out by himself. Meanwhile, bottom lane, though, what happened? Down goes Lundra yeah, to middle lane. Tinker's dead, too. Yeah, Lundra just takes too much damage. The Weaver is too sort of scary to sort of um, really lane against. I think this Lundra, I mean, he died before and now he's died again. He needs to go into the jungle because just the SD Weaver is enough to sort of kill him. One disruption and, and they're able to get on top of him and just instantly destroy him. 
And so it, we're going to start to see most likely Lone Droids play a more passive game um, going forward and sort of start jungling it. And this is the one weakness of, of, of playing Lone Droid in the, in the off lane position especially. Normally, obviously, we see him in the safe lane or at least the mid lane where you can kind of guarantee farm on him. But in the off lane now, he's, he's too vulnerable. And um, as we're seeing, a Lone Droid without farm is not scary at all, honestly. And well, he's got no farm. There is an iron talent picked up from, from, uh, from the Spirit Bear. So we're probably going to see him play sort of defensive when the, when the lane pushes out he's gonna have to go jungle but at, as it's at his tower he should be fine but top lane csd coming over but yeah more harassment coming out shadow demon though puts him under courier delivering some item right there to timber saw obviously that level four reactive armor also helping to keep him alive right here and he's gonna be more than fine actually as Mu will just easily timber chain away look at the shrine area you need to be careful about that very defensive actually um skill build from from Mu. Actually, like normally we see like a, a four points in reactive armor if you see like an off lane timber, but sound like a safe lane, you want to kind of have more kill potential, so obviously you get more points in Q or the W. But having four points in E is uh, very defensive, but obviously helps him out in, in that gank potential there. But bot lane, with, uh, <laughs> yeah, he kind of just says hello to them, but then a quick time lapse and he manages to escape. They obviously didn't have the lockdown ready to go, so. He'll be fine, but yeah, the bottom push. We'll see what they are able to make of it. Meanwhile, cancel middle lane. He's put under initially. Ogre Magi throws up the ignite. He's going to throw out the march, but Tinker, he's doing what he can to simply get away right here, which isn't much, unfortunately. Tinker doesn't work that way. He doesn't really have the greatest escape, so he goes down. Melons going to be chased back by Weaver. Will survive. Has that voodoo restoration in case he wants to use it, but again, the big kill on a Tinker just prior, and a 42 lead now for Duop. And where are they going? They are going back to base with the Dark Rift there. Yeah, just a nice little pit stop, some rest, and like sort of uh, regen and up. Both are all quite low, and then they're trying to TV back to pace, or TV back to the lane, and Shadowbin has his full bottle and full HP as well. Monkeys pushing out the bottom lane there, Iron Talon on the bear. Obviously, the tower kill just prior to that. Hand of Midas in the works, just about finished. Yeah, I think, I think that's fair, honestly. Like. I think you need to have farm on on the lone droid. I'm, I'm wondering whether he's going to be playing this kind of sniper build or not. Really, um, sometimes we n normally we've always been seeing this sort of sniper build, um, but because he's off lane and because he's going Midas here, we might even see him sort of go the usual radiance build that we've been seeing um, previously before you know patch 7.00. But we'll have to see. I feel so odd if he does that. I feel I feel because it's like this is like the new build, the the range aspect, yeah, taking exactly. advantage of the no, talent no, yeah. tree. I definitely do agree with you, but at the same time, normally when you we see the sort of the sniper build is when we're sort of seeing against him playing against like SD Luna and, and these kind of sort of short range heroes, whereas someone like a Weaver, although yes he has short range, obviously he has great mobility to get in the face of Lone Droid, whereas you know, him being in you know true form, having a lot more HP and, and relying on the bear allows him to be a lot more tanky, but we'll see. Like obviously just because of him going minor doesn't necessarily mean he is uh, going the the old style build of, of sort of building up the bear, but mm -hmm. it's not minus so far, which is something what we used to see sort of Admiral Bulldog do when he's obviously focusing on the on the bear. Good old Alfredo. So I heard. So I heard. Bottom lane, what's going on here? Melons, actually. He's going on by with that haste and has the bug applied to him, but Voodoo Restoration as well as a wand here. Ready to use if need be. Going to pop the shrine and also the sentry down, actually. Oh, time lapse. He gets feared. He doesn't have enough mana for the time lapse initially. He does now. He's going to Sakuchi away instead, and he will actually survive. Again, the Maledict is only level 1 still. Yeah, Maledict level 1 is so weak, as I mentioned before. Not nearly enough damage. Yeah, it, it almost feels like it's like not even worth getting, but of course he's going to level it up eventually. But yeah, Normally we see um, we see like 2-1-2 two two actually, but he's actually got uh, 3 points in the, in the coconut. Oh, mid lane. Middle lane, yeah. Cancel's in trouble. This Weaver's being very active early on. That's the kill there. Pops time lapse as well, just in case. And now they're going for the Timber Saw off to the side, but Timber Saw, quick Timber Chain, and he will be good as far as his distance goes. But this early control for Duop, it feels like uh, they're 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 looking pretty good. You know, Shadow Fina Weaver once again off to the good start, just like last game. Yeah, and Tinker is sort of very vulnerable, right? but he didn't have the greatest time to start with because he had an ogre in his lane. But there, like, there hasn't been any stacks, which I mentioned. Like, you'd think maybe there'd be some stacks um, in the jungle for Tinker to try and sort of um, you know, get farm up and things like that. Because if he sits mid, like he's so vulnerable. Like, there's no hero that can sort of sit mid and sort of protect him. 
Like which sort of sit in mid, but you know, just the uh, the paralyzing cost isn't enough. I don't think they need like a, a saving spell, like a dazzle or something to really help him. But something they just do not have in in this draft, so they're gonna have to try and farm cancel um, as much as they can elsewhere. But top lane though. Yeah, uh, Chakram kind of catching seven four seven a little bit. Z Freak wants to assist, but gonna miss the boulder smash. Meanwhile, Shadow Demon in the flank. Z Freak maybe would have been better to turn his attention to the Shadow Demon rather than go for that Shadow Fiend. It doesn't matter though. The Timber Chain in. And then the shock room to cut right through the Shadow Demon. So Moose like, I got this, don't worry. And he uh, accomplishes it. So that Bloodstone well in the works now for the Timbersaw here. But good chase and nice kill to be had for Complexity. As yeah, Timbersaw continues to be the top farmer in the game though. 5,800 gold net worth currently. Looking out for him. So Tinker, Tinker, definitely a hero you want to... Uh, you know, get going as soon as possible. Come online, you could even say. But cancel one and three so far. Not the prettiest start here, but he's working on it. What, what should we expect to Tinker to go, you think, early on here? Yeah, I think we'll just see the regular, obviously, sort of Sol Ring into Travels, into Aether, into Ags, or, or Blink. Um, yeah, definitely Blink before before Ags. But, yeah, just that's probably the, the most standard build uh, of Tinkers nowadays. I don't think we'll see anything crazy. Sometimes we see like a, a bloodstone depending on kind of the, the preference of the Tinker, but that'll be a lot later and that'll be after sort of A for Lens and, and Blink. But yeah, those two are the, the, the first two core items on the Tinker, just gives them a lot of kind of utility. And, um, but I think I was correct though, Breaky, with yeah. the, uh, the Bone Droid. I'm looking. Oh, like I... right. There's nothing better than being right, you know that. I, well, yeah, but it's it sucks when, it, when it's so wrong though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> man. But it, it has its merits, and at the same time, like I mean, Monkeys is not a bad player. He knows what he's doing. At the end Obviously, of the day. but like, like I said, like yes, Lone Droid. Uh, when you go the regular kind of range build and sniper build, but, it, but again, it's good against certain heroes. But in the meantime, top lane of Spirit most likely is gonna yeah. Yeah, drop very quickly. Yeah, but like, like I said, it, like first of all. The Radiance, let's talk about the Radiance. The Radiance has a lot of benefit here. Um, good against SF and Weaver, both obviously focusing on the right clicks, so the, the miss chance is going to be useful, um, particularly uh, before the BKBs are, are picked up. Um, secondly, obviously the range format is good when you can outrange heroes like Luna, um, who are kind of immobile and, and low range, but heroes like obviously Weaver, you're always going to get sort of close close and personal, and with when you're in the regular range form of, of Lone Droid, you're very, very squishy, but if you're in you know, the true form here, I mean, look at him, he's going to be like nearly 2k HP, which is a, a lot more hard to deal with uh, with heroes like Weaver, so, yeah, I, I think, honestly, uh, I think this is kind of the build, and oh my god, DD, and Weaver nearly just two shot the Earth Spirit. Yeah, he he's still to chasing, actually. Yeah, the bug's on him, Shikuchi in, I don't know if Zephyr's yeah. getting out of this, there we go. Double damage too much. Middle lane? No, oh, they're fine. They're just pushing it out as Lundry makes his way here. But, yeah, I'll say this. I mean, it's one of those, if Complexity doesn't win this game, a lot of people will kind of look at this and be like, why did you even go Lundry if you're not going to go the OP build? But, yeah, it's, it still has its merits. You are right, and, and I definitely think it's going to be fun to see. Anyways, middle lane, yeah, Shadow Demon setting up this initiation right here, but not enough follow-up in time. Also, you have to remember that Lone Druid was off lane, um, not safe lane uh, or mid. Um, so obviously, he's not going to get the same kind of a farm. True. So having something like a, a Midas in the Radiance is uh, is kind of m a little bit more reliable than the going like the Dragon Lancer and the Molyneux, which is something that you kind of get if you're getting a lot of farm priority. Um, so there is a lot of differences here, and um, I don't know, we'll see how it works out for sure. But um, he's closing on the Sacred Reddit about a thousand two hundred away from it, so I think it's a, a, a timely. Oh. Bottom lane, as you say this, uh, not so timely anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he gets killed. Well, they uh, still are going to be okay, but yeah, no, that's a dying right there, slowing it down quite a bit. And now this bottom secondary tower going to be heavily pressured. Witch Doctor, actually, no Pit of Malice just yet. It's going to be coming up right here. Got the rune, and that's a dead Witch Doctor as well, most likely. One more auto attack. Dark Rift activated. They're going all for it. They do get the kill. Now Dark Whiff will send them back, and there you go. So they're going to be fine. The chase is on now, trying to catch up to the Shadow Fiend. Don't think, uh, well, maybe. Actually, Cancel does have a haste Going to be wearing off right there. 747, though, has a TP. Do they have any stopper? They do at the last second. The Boulder Smash comes through, and now Shadow Fiend is like, all right, Requiem of Souls time. That's not going to matter. They will pick him off. So good job by Complexity, at least chasing down the Shadow Fiend and securing one kill right there. 
I think it was arguably it was a little bit questionable from the SF though, like trying to. I think if he kept on running, like the haste from Tinker was running out, so I think he, the only way he dies there is if he gets caught by the 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 Earth Spirit. So I don't know, if he kept on running to the tier two, he might be able to help him. But regardless, though, nice kill, um, a nice chase from Complexity. They definitely need a kill that they were definitely needing. That the SF was kind of spiraling out of control, closing in on his butterfly very early on. And Timber Saldo, he continues to be the top farmer in the game when it comes to that net worth. That uh, Bloodstone now 14 charges on it, and he almost has the Blink Dagger as well. So, again, Moo really continuing to show why uh, he's known to play a damn good Timber Saul. And doing that here for complexity yet again. As far as the scaling goes, that's where, you know, maybe a little bit of the concern comes into play. But that's why you got a Lone Druid as well as the Tinker even to be useful throughout the game. And that Radiance, it's uh, 3,000 gold saved up now, so... Almost has the Sacred Relic, at least. And then shortly after, of course, the pattern for that Radiance. So, yeah, I mean, it's it, again, it's it's not like Radiance is bad. We can't look at it that way. It's I guess the logic you could use, though, is that why even go the Lone Druid then? Why not maybe get a more yeah. useful offlane? But... I, I agree with that uh, totally because, obviously, we talked about how in the draft complexity were um, sort of setting up um, for the do-wop Luna pick for their last pick. So they picked up heroes like Timbersaw, picked up heroes like Lone Druid, picked up heroes like Tinker. And obviously the reason why Lone Druid was being sort of so prevalent lately is is this this range form to deal with, you know, the Luna who has very low range um, and sort of able to sort of climb around. But as you said, if if they were picking this hero to deal with the Luna and uh, that never ended up coming, why would you, you know, <laughs> go go there here if you're not going to go that. But I don't know, maybe maybe the, if, if there was a Luna pick, then he would have went in the range form because there wasn't a Luna. He's gone for this, you know focusing on the bear strap. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I like this um, this variation. Well, uh, again, so far, though, it's uh, still pretty early in the game here, only 17 and a half minutes in, and as far as the net worth goes, the chart at least, it's pretty even overall. Complexity had a fairly decent lead, upwards of almost 2,500 there for a bit early in this game, but then it started dipping back in favor of doo-wop, and now we see it going back down for Complexity, though. So really kind of a back-and-forth game here at this uh, still earlier part once again. There's the Blink Dagger picked up on Timber Saw, so move again, continues to be on top of those net worth charts at 8,600 now, and gonna rotate to the bottom lane. Top lane, Underlord kinda having fun with Lone Druid up here. Underlord actually has a Radiance queued up as well. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, sometimes I do see it because obviously Underlord is uh, such a tanky that. hero and, and so strong in his own right that it's hard to bring him down. So obviously the Radiance sort of allows him to sort of be in the thick of it and, and get a lot of damage off just from the Radiance burn. Um, and obviously it's quite decent. Um, but in this game, I don't think it's that strong. Um, Timber Sword doesn't really right click, neither does the Tinker. So really, where, where is the mischance really going to be sort of taking effect? Um, Nowhere, really, I don't think. Well, obviously, it's good against the, the Lone Droid Bear, but, I mean, a position three hero to sort of be sort of that much committing onto an item, I don't think it's very good, to be honest. So I, I have to disagree with the Radiance in this game. Yeah. Obviously, it, it's good. There's a lot of... Oh, talking to mid lane. Oh, bot lane. Oh, yeah. going to go down, but... It, it, like, it's good against sort of squishy heroes, like Witch Dogs, obviously, can take a lot of damage, but I don't think it's worth it. And SD, <laughs> oh, that disruption was definitely not worth it. Well, that was well played by Z Freak right there, lining up that Boulder Smash, too. On top of the uh, Shadow Demon. Top lane, actually, they're diving our Dark Pack, uh, Dark Rift, excuse me, out. And Underlord will be fine. Middle lane cancel. He's going to heal up a bit with those bottle charges. Weaver diving, though, and gets the kill. And then he time lapses out to safety once again. That Desolator doing a work with that single target damage. Meanwhile, the BKB on his Shadow. No, that's oh, not a BKB. What am I saying? I thought he had it for some reason. It's almost like he was glowing that gold. But no, he does not. And he easily goes down there as a result. Trying to TP out in time. Look at Moo go, man. He is just on fire. 17 charges now on the Bloodstone. He's might get another kill out of this. No, not enough damage. Doesn't connect with the Timber Chain as far as the damage goes. He's going to be purged, though, by Shadow Demon. Slowing him down a little bit, but he ain't too worried about that. Moo's Timbersaw is really keeping complexity in this game. And, like They were really struggling, I think, in the early laning phase in, in mid-game, but these kind of just the strength of, of, of Moo's Timbersaw. He's got 17 large stone shows now. They're, so, they're really struggling to sort of kill him, so he's able to play so aggressive, which if you look at it, I mean, Lone Druid hasn't been involved in any kind of team fight for, for since the start of the game, really. So you know, Moo's created a lot of space now for, for Lone Droid to sort of farm up. He's closing in on his Radiance now, um, and there's even a minus pickup from, from Earth Spirit as well. So, yeah, I think Moose sort of played this more of a, a space maker, um, which he sort of struggled to do on the on the Clink's last game, but definitely is uh, accomplishing it on the Timbersaw this game. 
That Radiance almost finished. Almost finished on the Spirit Bear here for Monkeys. He actually doesn't have the Sacred Relic on him yet, so not taking advantage of the added damage here. But he wants to get the full-on Radiance. And it's just going to have it all delivered at once. But, of course, uh, again, that, that will be crucial. And, yeah, looking at the talent trees, and those people are curious about that. Again, he is going the different build. He's going the 250 health and now the 30 Spirit Bear damage on top of that. He can only – I still think he may get the 50-second respawn time. I mean, that's pretty yeah. damn good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. man, 50, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, the armor on Bear is still decent. Obviously, he's playing against a lot of negative armor from the Weaver and the SF. And obviously, if his bear, bear is going to be up in the front ground, he's going to need as much armor as he can on that bear. But you are right. Minus 50 respawn is very, very good. But I think you could argue that the, the armor might be better, just slightly. Yeah. We'll see. And we'll see what he decides to go for. Tinker, Blink Dagger, has enough money to purchase it. Meanwhile, the Shrine area, Weaver is going to open. Will they pop the Shrine? They will not. They just try to run, actually. Melons will survive. Try to go for that quick kill right there. And I see Moon rotating over. Again, as that blink, the Yules is just about finished as well. So Moon continuing his great farm here. Z Freak also with the hand of Midas, actually, by the way, on the uh, on the Earth Spirit here. Yeah, it's something that I see a lot of um, Earth Spirit players do. Like, they kind of fall off in the, in the late game. Um, but uh, an iron like Midas can really kind of secure them some kind of farm, particularly if the game's kind of stagnating, which it kind of has for the last couple of five minutes or so. Which is, uh, has been. Top lane continuing the push at the tower, but Weaver, or not Weaver, uh, Tinker doing his job of sending out the marsh, though. Counter pushing the best that he can. That's middle lane, actually. The Spear Bear is caught right here. Again, this pretty significant Spear Bear. Not usually lately with the Lone Druids, but this one definitely is. Has that Radiance. They're going to dive here somewhat, Moo. He's thinking about making a play out of Ogre. Nice stun through from Z-Freak, and that should be a dead Ogre match as a result. The offensive earn. Chakrim, there we go. Timber Chain, oh, my God, he's still alive, actually. He's put under by the, dis dis the, the uh, shadow team, that is, with the disruption, and finally get it in the end, but survived a little longer than expected, maybe. But they're pushing mid now. This should be a tower kill on top of that. Again, the bear, that's with the extra damage, definitely seeding those bases pretty effectively as Underlord gets caught in the background by Timbersaw initially. Again, the follow-up from Z-Freak, and down goes Snake King. So they're going to go to the base. They're already sieging, force a buyback out of Underlord. What is going on here for complexity? Uh, moves Timbersaw, mate. He's just he's playing out of his mind, honestly. So aggressive, knows his limits so well. And like, you, you, I don't know if you saw as well, but that blink play actually onto, onto the Timber Chain. It's so useful as well, able to get damage off without really come out, committing too hard into the base, actually. And um, yeah, it's able to sort of force a buyback from Underlord and, and again puts his team ever further ahead. He's got 19 Bloodstone charges, man. This guy is unstoppable right now. Looking really good. Port in the middle lane from Cancel. Trying to defend what he can again, but not going to be the case there. The tower does fall. Look at Shadow Fiend. He actually got the first item Butterfly. Uh, following up the Dragon Lance, curious pickup there. I mean, I guess you know with uh, maybe with the the bear on the front lines, but you have that timber saw that's dealing a lot of damage. Yeah, he doesn't really care about yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. It's something similar to what you know the, the weather. Oh yeah, big fight coming out right here. Shaku going to be used. Dark Rift activated by Snake King, but they're kind of running away from Shadow Fiend, just simply getting on out of there himself, and the rest will escape. So no deaths happening as a result of that. As you see, Shadow Fiend makes his way to the top lane. But, uh, of course, they did get the Roshan right prior to it. Nice little sneaky play there from Duop. Again, the Weaver and the SF doing so much damage, obviously, because of the, the negative armor onto Rosh. And was able to sort of skirt away with the um, taxi ride home from the Underlord. So, nice, nice sort of um, sneaky Rosh. I don't think like they could really take up a, a team fight 5 on 5, actually. So, for them to sort of take that Rosh was uh, actually a massive play there from Duop. Yeah. Yeah, Shadow Fiend, he finds Z Freak here. Look at those auto attacks, man. He finally gets the barrel roll off and he will survive. But man, you see Shadow Fiend with that, uh, with that butterfly. He does right click pretty damn hard. Now Moo going back in middle, but he'll actually play yeah, Decker back. Going back to that butterfly, I think you're right though. Like obviously, I mean, it's a great item on, on SF anyway, because obviously he does a loads of damage obviously with the agility, um, but he can't really take too much of, um, you know, the advantage of the, of the evasion. That you get from it there's no real right clicks but one thing that is very important to, to note though is um oh, actually top lane the ogre's gonna go down most likely it's gonna get caught out of position and sf now is struggling against timbersaw dear 
dead. And you got Timmersaw now. He's obviously got that reactive armor tanked out. The Blood Zone 19 charges, puts the Yule Scepter on his Shadow Fiend. Here comes a follow-up. Shadow Demon in the background is picked off, and down goes Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend does have a buyback. They do take out Earth Spirit in the midst of it, but that is a three for one overall. Moo still wants more damage, more charges, and more kills. Snaking pops the Shrine, and that means Moo will have to probably get back, if he can actually. He's being locked down by that Pit of Malice. Another Shrine use right there. They're using it all, but the top racks, while this whole time the Spirit Bears are sitting on top of it, pounding it down, they do pick off the Witch Doctor in the background, but you see Timbersaw, he is still looking pretty good to go. Shadow Fiend's staying dead throughout all this, despite having that buyback and Moo. He'll just walk it off, throws the Eel Scepter out, and now he fully is going to oh. retreat right here. Middle lane. Weaver forced to use his ulti, but it's going to be fun in the end. But. Okay. But yeah, you're surprised SF didn't buy back there though, because losing that Rax is, is very, very much detrimental. But again, though, we're talking about the butterfly on SF, and then he just sort of solo dies to, to both the, the Earth Spirit and the Timber Sword. If he has BKB there, he can man up and, and do so much work against the Timber Sword and the Earth Spirit. But the butterfly makes him you know, do a lot of damage with right clicks, but very susceptible to the Timber Sword, which is really the, the hard carry here for Complexity. 21 Bloodstone charges now, and it does not look like he's slowing down any, anytime soon. Yeah, this is insane. I mean, <laughs> that Shiva's going to be absolutely huge on top of that. So definitely the questionable pickup of Shadow Fiend. But, hey, you know, they still have an Aegis on Weaver. So doo feels like she'll be able to make some kind of move right here. But they just can't catch Moo. I mean, he is just moving around the map, constantly pushing lanes. And, you know, it feels like if you try to go for a kill on him, he'll just turn on you. And while this is all happening, Tinker split pushing. And on top of that, obviously, Lone Druid, as we saw in that last fight, I mean, he basically took out that top set of racks right there while Moo is distracting the whole team. And they also catch Ogre Magi now. Yet again, the Shock Rim out. He, he's not getting away from that. And another kill. Another Bloodstone charge for, for Moo. Um, just going back to this Butterfly uh, on, on SF, I know we've talked about it a little bit, but one uh, one thing we haven't really talked about is that um, obviously they they need kind of a, an illusion kind of hero um, to sort of pair with the, the SF. I guess Weaver is okay, but I guess with this Butterfly pickup, obviously the, the plus 35 agility is very nice to, to be used for the, for the SD uh, with the destruction. So I'm just saying to talk about it as well. But talking of SD, Nini dies actually. What lane does go down? Yeah, but well, Spirit Bear, exactly. He's just siege in the base while that distraction happens. Melons is going to fall. <laughs> That was a very uh, ambitious uh, use of the Death Ward right there. He ends up dying shortly after, but might as well give it a try, I guess. But now you have Timbersaw. That Shiva's being delivered, at least. Yeah, that's how I thought it was. Yeah, there we go. It's on there. And AC just finished on Monkeys, actually. Delivered to his bear. So look at that protection, as well as the Team 5 presence here. Snaking, having to deal with Timbersaw yet again. Going to be slowed initially. They do lock down Weaver in the background. However, Disruption. Puts him under. Does he have an ultimate? He does. He pops a time lapse. Only at half life, though. And he will have to squirm on back. But uh, they could probably use a gem here on complexity side, you would think. Not picking one up just yet, though. Uh, they're going to keep this push going, though. And uh, I don't know if Duop can really stop this. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's just be, it's getting to a point now. I mean, you got Lone Druid. Sure, he didn't go the, uh, the whole right-click range sniper 2.0 build. But obviously, with this bear being beefy now, that sieging presence is very powerful. Yeah, very, really strong. And obviously with the AC as well, like the better beds are gonna attack faster, obviously the towers are gonna take negative negative bomb as well, and you know, the towers are gonna drop from as they have top as well as bot. So and they have like Tinger uh, Tinga March spam as well, so it's hard for Duops to really get in and, and really kinda of contest the, the uh, siege from Lexity now. Who has Invis actually? Is lurking, but he's not going to find anything there. Yeah, 22 charges. Ag's being picked up, so you have the double chakram to be had once he finishes that, obviously. Weaver, the fusel blade being worked on by Weaver. What do you think of that choice? I mean, the mana burn? Yeah, it's really, it's nothing to do with the mana burn. It's to do with the two ghost scepters from Complexity, the Witch okay. Doctor and the Tinker. There's, like, both heroes are of kind of high priority targets to kill. Like, it, Witch Doctor dies in two, two hits, as long as it the ghost scepter off. Which Blade is able to purge off, so yeah, it's good. Yeah. Bottom lane again, they're kind of poking in. The tower's already dead. There's a purge on the Timbersaw, but he's just gonna wait it off. Yeah, Shadow Fiend is moving on out somewhat. Does have a BKB now, so that's definitely a tool that'll help him. 
against the likes of uh, like, uh, Magic. Bloodstone just picked up by, by uh, the Tinker as well, something I mentioned earlier about the kind of item pick up that Tinker might go for. He's actually uh, skipped the, the Aether Lens, which I thought he would go for, but I guess the Ghost Scepter is definitely much more needed against sort of this um, this Weaver Ball, though he does have his Diffusal Blade now, so that Ghost Scepter is not going to help him in, in any way, actually. But still does force out the Diffusal Blade from this Weaver. Yeah, could always uh, force out kind of a counter pick item if he can, so. Yeah, and he, he still has that. obviously the laser to, to stop the Weaver, although he does have Lincolns, so he's going to have to pop something uh, on the Lincolns and then be able to use the, the laser to sort of give him that kind of like, physical immunity from the Weaver, obviously with the 100% miss chance on the uh, laser. Under Laura, they're trying to chase him down. Shiva's popped, it does catch him. He, he activates the Dark Rift immediately. And that means he's gonna live, but oh, Try close that. actually. Wait, would that do anything? What was he trying to do? <laughs> would the Yules actually do anything? No, because I, it... I say you're really low again. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Your sorry, mic yeah. keeps going in and out. <laughs> it's hard to hear you sometimes. S S S D is dead. That he is. I think uh, I think that the Dark Rift on on Underlord works similar to sort of Conker's uh, X box. Uh, but here we go. Though. Ogre might be. Nope, they do follow in. Yeah, Ogre, he's dead right here. And he does, no, okay, he does have a buyback. Use it immediately, actually. Shadow Demon staying dead. Now, they do have a shrine to use, so actually using it right there. So never mind, they do not anymore. BKB is on cooldown now for Shadow Fiend, so a chance for Complexity to really go cutthroat here, pushing into the bottom base. Of course, the Spirit Fairy leading the way, and it's just so difficult to kill and deal with. Siege in that melee racks very effectively. Timbers on the back on the Shock room comes out. Underlord forced to fall back, barely alive himself. And that's also going to be the range racks on top. So Complexity really pushing into the base of Doo-Wop now. And it just doesn't feel like they can do much about it. Once again, Ogre will get picked off. This time he's not buying back as Tinker lasers him down. The Maledict currently on Shadow Fiend. Chasing back Cancel. But again, Moo jumps back in. And now Shadow Demon having to deal with them as a death ward from a distance. Just killing some, uh, some illusions, it seems like. But Shadow Demon now picked off. And again, he doesn't have a buyback. Weaver locked down. Weaver's dead. And he with no buyback. GG, well played. That will officially do it in favor of Complexity. So they're going to take game two and at least split the series here against Duval. I think there's, there's, I mean, there's only one hero or one player that stands out for me really is in move. Just played so fantastic on that Timber Sword. Like, had such a, a great sort of lane phase, obviously just from having kind of a Timber in the safe lane getting farmed. But the, the way he kind of utilized that farm and played so aggressively was was just fantastic. And, and Duval didn't really have an answer to it, honestly. Um, they they had like a, a decent laning phase, but after you know Mu picked up his bloodstone, it just seemed to <laughs> go so well for Mu, and uh, just went from there. Played so aggressive, and I guess the the draft from from complexity worked out in the end. Honestly, if your team's playing complexity in the future, aka Team Freedom later on today, I I think the argument can be made maybe ban out Timbersaw because complexity yeah, honestly, really showing that. that they're, well, they're showing that they're they're like going to pick it up for Moo, even though he's at their one position, and yeah. he's occupying one of the better ones out there in the world, even. So um, that's definitely a hero that you could argue banning. I wonder if Team Freedom watching this, they're going to pick up on that or not. But uh, that'll be interesting. To see what they do there. But with that said, that means this series again going to come to a conclusion. Again, the one-one split between these two teams. But Complexity will be moving on now to play Team Freedom with the final match of the night in their two-game series there. And uh, that's set to happen in about 20 minutes or something like that, so it uh, shouldn't be too long here before we get into that one and not much of a break. But, uh, Minnie, I believe you're going to be taking off, though. Unfortunately, I do. I live in the U.K., um, so it's like nearly like 2 o'clock um, for me, so I'm going to have to right. call it at night. But uh, I appreciate it for having me. Sorry if there was any uh, audio issues. Um, I take full responsibility. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to help you break you. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying to take all the blame. But Life. I'm joking. But um, yeah, thanks for having me break it. It was good and appreciate being on and, and casting some good daughter actually. Yeah. Well, always fun. And uh, you can find him at Mini Esports on Twitter. So there you go. Check it out. All right. Thanks again, man. I look forward to, uh, to next time as well. But ladies Definitely. and gentlemen. We're going to go on a short break right here. Game number one of Complexity versus Team Freedom. After about a 20-minute break or so, we should be back here. So sit tight, guys. Starlighter I-League Star Series American Region continues. Next, here on the cast.